Hello and welcome. Tonight I'll be playing Flashpoint Campaign's Red Storm. My name is Kenneth Maniscalco. Uh, I've been uh, gaming for, well, gee whiz, first board games, first serious war games, um, summer of 1970. So this is uh, a lifetime habit. Uh, it'd be nice to think that gives me some spectacular skill, wisdom, um, insight. Uh, in fact, it just means that I've wasted more hours uh, playing games, and some folks watching this may have been alive. That being said, I'm going to spend the time tonight playing Flashpoint Campaign's Red Storm. Uh, the game was designed by On Target Simulations. It's published by Matrix Games, and uh, it's been out for hmm, over a year now. In fact, about a year ago, I posted several videos uh, of some playthroughs. Uh, they uh, didn't demonstrate any particular skill, but it was interesting stuff. I enjoyed it. Life kind of got complicated, and I've been uh, a little bit out of the, the gaming thing. But uh, recently, a bug bit me to get back into this, so I've been poking at it with a stick and learning a little bit, relearning. Uh, it's changed significantly since its uh, release uh, but still it's uh, essentially the same game uh, and uh, and a lot of fun uh, I have some fairly strong opinions about parts of it but uh, I won't at least at this point bore you with that I think tonight uh, to kind of get myself warmed up and get ready for uh, videos that I intend to do later we're going to start with a tutorial. That'll give me a chance to uh, spend a little more time playing around with the interface in the video rather than the game because uh, in the, the bigger scenarios, there's a lot to do. And uh, I anticipate that if uh, if I do follow up with videos on it, that uh, there are going to be more than a few long videos to, uh, to play on. Uh, to play through the larger scenarios. The uh, tutorial is manageable and uh, we can deal with the uh, essentials of the game, or at least the way I've got the game set up, uh, and, uh, and and get our brains wrapped around it. For, uh, for those of you who are experienced with the game, I'm sure you'll find me doing things that uh, uh, make you giggle and point at me. Uh, that's fine. That's what the comments are for. Uh, and uh, if you're not uh, not familiar with the game or just getting started even here a year or so in, maybe you'll learn something uh, if if only what not to do. So let's get started. Let's pick a scenario and single scenario selected, computer opponent. Player one is NATO commander. And go find the tutorial scenario there it is proceed now these gameplay options vary the gameplay or should I say vary but they affect the gameplay significantly depending on which ones you turn on and off uh, tonight I'm going to have enemy units and markers always visible off so only when a unit can actually see an enemy unit will it be uh, shown on the map. Uh, I'm going to leave the emergency resupply uh, on. Um, that's kind of lame. I probably shouldn't do it, <laughs> but I'm going to. Uh, I'm turning the limited staff rule uh, not in effect off, which is a double negative. Basically, the limited staff rule is on, which means we will be limited in the number of orders that can be issued in any given turn or any given bound. If I understand the manual correctly, the computer is not limited that way, although it looks to me like that's selected, so perhaps I misunderstood the manual. I'm turning that off for both players. Only a certain number of orders will be able to be issued on any given turn. Uh, I'm going to allow staff uh, fire support, uh, and uh, which is basically allowing the computer to take over 
fire support missions that uh, I do not designate. If I use, if I choose not to designate specific fire support missions, the computer will do it for me. Um, we'll get into that in the game. I'm going to allow the control L line of sight checks. I'll demonstrate that in a minute. That's very cool. And I'm not sure how you play this game without being able to get a feel for what you may or may not be able to see from any given point. Uh, again, uh, the purist may think that's lame. Uh, well, there you go. Set it up the way you like to. We're not going to allow browsing of spotted enemy units. Um, so we're going to have fairly high fog of war and a limited number of orders allowed to be issued. But some other nice things that I like, making the game a little simpler to play set. So babbled on enough about that. Proceed. The scenario description. Let's go to the player briefing. Um... I'm not going to read this all the way through. The bottom line is there are some bridges. Well, we can't see it here. All right, maybe I'll read it. You're hereby ordered to move the to town of Nordheim, Vordoron, and secure the bridges, two river crossings uh, for follow-on force to utilize in later operations. So expect moderate resistance from elements of the Soviet 12th Guards Tank Division. And uh, uh, enemy forces should be considered to have recon air defense assets. They're looking to capture and exploit as many river crossings as they can. Uh, expect light fog and clearing weather as the day starts. Soviet forces are already underway with moderate jamming and spoofing in operations impacting our command network. Force roster will tell us what we have. Uh, regimental headquarters, veteran troops, 90% resinous, 75% morale, 90% ammo. So here's the regimental headquarters unit, and this gives you the details of the vehicles and units inside. Uh, here's the squadron headquarters, a squadron of Challenger tanks. Um, and each of its subunits, um, a reconnaissance element, an anti-tank unit, and then a... Uh, Veteran Armored Infantry unit, a couple of mortars, mortar units I should say, and a uh, AA anti-aircraft element, attack helicopters. Offboard support includes uh, a tornado and some M109s. The rest of this is interesting. We'll get into it in a little bit. Let's proceed. I'm going to skip this part. Now, there are different ways to set... Oh, and by the way, let's take a look at this. Let's zoom out. This is not the standard map. Uh, off the top of my head, I can't recall where this, uh, where I got these. They are... Uh, I will include a link to them. It's very easy to install this mod. I think there are three different sets, or three different sets, three different sets of maps and different styles. I like this one, uh, Inverted Summer. It's a, a they can, I believe it's inverted because instead of the high elevations becoming lighter, they become darker. So as you look down in the valley, the light colors, and as you climb up the hill, uh, it gets darker. Uh, I do have the link to this. It's a, a really nice mod, and it's easy to uh, easy to install. All right, let's look at the C3 tab. This tells us that our order cycles are right now 16 minutes, which means every 16 minutes we can issue new orders, and we're anticipating the next order cycle will be 16 minutes. The estimate for the Soviets are 22 minutes and 22 minutes uh, and for the next cycle. So we're able to uh, significantly, almost, a significant advantage in command cycle. As the game moves on, as the battle 
uh, proceeds, these will change uh, generally for the worse. Um, it says that local EW hindrance is low. Order of battles, this is, this is a really important slick little uh, display of the uh, unit organization and subordination. So your regimental headquarters, which is here, uh, has the squadron, uh, the challenger squadron reporting to it, the uh, mech infantry reporting to the, to the regimental headquarters, and the mortar, uh, this, this particular mortar uh, unit reporting directly to regimental headquarters, and the uh, AA unit. Now it's also showing these other assets, which are not here yet. They will arrive uh, as time proceeds. Neat display, very useful. I'm going to show you how I like to use it. Um, fire support right now, that's the uh, mortars that are either in the mech infantry unit or the mortars that are reporting directly to the regimental headquarters. Uh, here are our reinforcements at 40 minutes. We should expect to see some M109s. At 59 minutes, we should expect to see attack helicopters. At two hours, the tornadoes are available. And after three hours, roughly, the uh, attack helicopters, if they survive, will depart. Victory point hexes, it shows where they are, there, there. Clicking on them highlights them on the map. That's kind of slick. Um, it shows that first armor starting unit victory points. It also has, we have victory points that are claimed here, I guess. No, they're not. Starting location victory points zero, right. So the unclaimed victory points are here. And that's going to be the heart of the game, defending these bridges. I'm about half inclined to blow those bridges. You can always rebuild them. In fact, if we look, zoom in here, there's a bridge that's already blown at uh, hex 2317. Finally, this gives us a chance to change sound things. It's set the way I want it. Now, we're allowed to set up in these blue areas. Now, why anybody would set up back here, I'm not rightly sure. Uh, I'm going to set up in here and move out from there. My plan is to move my, or at least significant elements of the mech infantry into the town, here, here, blow those bridges. We're going to hold this side. Uh, I don't know. I might advance. You know, I might advance to the other side. Let's we'll just see how it breaks. And and a year or so ago, they used to be folks that would advance this way occasionally. Last couple of playthroughs, all I've ever seen are the uh, Soviets coming down that way. So let's go ahead and get set up uh, as best we can. Let's see. The way to do this, it seems to me, is to click here to find that regimental headquarters and put him on the road somewhere. I'll just move him out of the way. Now, there's my armor headquarters and there's the rest of the challengers now this is trivial in this scenario but I promise you in the bigger scenarios using the order of battle display over here to find your units to move them and keep them in command control uh, as you set up is a big deal so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick that first here and the second guy, second platoon here, third here. I believe they're troops for the uh, the Brits. I should call them that. I could be wrong. It won't be the first time or the last. 
All right, now the armor's where I want it, and I'll be giving them orders shortly. There's my double A, my anti-aircraft unit. I'm going to set it there and rotate the stack. There's my recon unit. I'm happy with where he is. And there is the, uh, the anti-tank missile unit. I'm going to set it up there. These guys are going to move out down this way, and uh, I want them getting where they're going quickly. Finally, there's the headquarters for the mech infantry. We'll set him there. The mech infantry, If you here's, here's something nice. You just let that hover there, and you can see what's in the stack. There's two units of uh, the first and the uh, second and the third of the first infantry are there. The headquarters of the first and the first of the first infantry is there. And the uh, first infantry mortars are there. So I'm going to go ahead and put him there and go ahead and move my HQ and my <clears throat> attached mortars there. Now, again, using this in this scenario is trivial, but it is kind of nice to do. In the, in the bigger scenarios, it makes a big deal. Now, line of sight. That's a big thing. Control L, and that gives us what each unit can see and how well it can see, and I'm not sure if this is a these numbers are a percentage or uh, some other way of rating their ability to see, but it's obvious that it is not just because you have a line of sight that you won't necessarily see what's there. And the higher this number is, the better chances are that you'll see them. What's cool about this is once that's set, you're allowed to shift left click in other places and you can see what that unit could see from those locations. So where would I want to be able to, where would I want to set these guys to be able to cover the town? Well, if I put them here, you can see I can see on this plateau, but not much down in this valley. And as you move forward, you find up, oh, there you go, you pretty much have to be right here at the edge of this rise to see down into the valley here. Now, I expect the attack to come from this direction, although they may move from here. They just might. Uh, that being said, I think I'm still going to take this marker, this fire support pre-plotted marker, and put it on that roadblock. So, how to cover these guys? Now, you can't protect them. You can't, I mean, if you can keep the bad guys out of this valley, then fine. You could sit here. Let's go back up here and do it. Control L. And then shift. Take, let's go back up here. They can see to here. Here, they can see across. This road is a big deal. From here, there we go, we can see down this way a ways. If we take a look at another unit, I'm not sure how this will work. Let's take a look at, let's go over, let's go over here. Rotate that stack. And then shift L. So, I think my plan is move the infantry into the town, cover them with the tanks, supporting fires. My reconnaissance I'm going to put over in this neighborhood to watch this road back toward Ostheim. And my AAA 
and my strikers, I think they are, the anti-tank guys here. Regimental headquarters back this way. Regimental mortars back here. The uh, infantry's mortars probably behind the hill somewhere. So let's go ahead and give some orders. Now, giving orders, this is really a big damn deal in the game again. A lot of this is a big deal, isn't it? Let's uh, select the entire stack, simplify our lives. You can set up to three waypoints. So right click, we're going to move deliberate from there to here to here. And I want them to hold when they get there. These guys, I'm going to not select the stack, move deliberate from here to here, hold, rotate stack, move deliberate here to here, hold. And you can see the unit's proposed path. Now you can, after you post this, you look at this and say, well, you know, I'm not sure I like that. Well, you could move the waypoint, and that makes more sense. Sort of. That one's okay. That one's okay. And the command vehicle, the command unit, I should say. Take a look at his command radius. Eight hexes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's typical. In fact, it may be, I don't remember seeing any that aren't eight hexes. So there, you got an eight hex command radius. And I think we will take him and give him move deliberate and tuck him back away here. Let's let him move to there. Now, what have I had here? Let's find my recon unit. There he is. I want him to move hasty. Hasty and deliberate. Hasty is going to be road march. Deliberate is going to be in uh, tactical order. Um, without going into any details. You take a risk moving hasty. I think it's, uh, so far I've, I haven't seen that that's a big deal in this particular scenario. I want him to move to here, to here, to there. Let's see how that path looks. When he gets there, I want him to scream, which means he can come running away if he wants, and that's reasonable. That looks pretty good. Rotate the stack, the anti-tank guy, Move deliberate here, here, and rotate the stack again. And any aircraft unit, move deliberate here, here. If they get 30 minutes of time in place, they're considered dug in. Uh, I'm not sure how that pre built fortification affects that. All right, all we got left now is the regimental headquarters and the regimental mortar. And I think I will take them and move them hasty. Down straight into the town. Give them screen orders. Rotate stack. Move hasty here screen orders, leaving us finally with the uh, mechanized infantry. Um, be courageous and go ahead and try to hold the uh, other side of the river. Might be foolish, but it'll be glorious. Let's have them move deliberate here. Well, that's probably a mistake. There and there. Let's see how that... I want them not to dismount. I want them to dismount the same hex. Give them hold orders. 
yeah, that worked just fine. Rotate stack. Them to move. Deliver it again. Here, here, here. Hold orders. Let's find the... Uh, well, we can let this hover and select the headquarters that way. Have them move, deliver it here, and tuck them in on this side of the river. Probably foolish again, but I don't mind making a lot of mistakes. Why not? Why not make just piles and piles of them? Move deliberately here, and. here and here. That should work them across that river. Right, that worked well. And the company mortars, they need to be back a ways. Let's um, move them here, stash them up behind that. Whoa, well that might have been a mistake. Them hold orders. Now, you can delete the waypoints and do it again. Now, in pre-setup, that doesn't matter. You do this in the game, you use an order, you just burnt one, even if you change it. So, move deliberate. Here, here. Hit the enter key. Zero. There they go. Give them screen orders. I think I've given everybody orders. Rotate stacks, watch. Looks pretty good. Well, let's zoom out, hit the button, and we'll see what happens. I've turned off a lot of the sound effects uh, for movement. Uh, they got on my nerves, and uh, but we'll still get to hear the bullets fly and explosions and all that fun stuff. You'll never see in any of these games, you'll never see these guys move as quickly or uh, directly ever again once the fighting starts. Enjoy it while it lasts. Everybody's proceeding right along as planned. Still haven't seen any bad guys. I don't think we will before this turns over. In fact, looking at the time, coming up on 30 minutes, I guess probably we'll end this video when this initial move completes. Right now there's two minutes to British orders again, so we're not going to get in a position Battlefield conditions have changed. Visibility is 2,000 meters. These guys will not be in position at the end of the first order cycle. Okay. Game resolution phase is now over. British order phase is about to begin. So, everybody's moving right along. You can see... As we rotate through... Where everybody's intending to go. Nice and smooth, just as easy as can be. But then again, nobody's trying to kill anybody yet, so uh, it, it, it's it's going to be easy, right? Anybody can drive down the road when you're not being shot at. I'll call this one good, and uh, see you in the next video when we uh, start the playthrough. Thanks for watching and see you soon.